So this is a step-by-step -step guide on how to buy a property. Man like Mr. Blue asked me to make this video. Mr. Blue runs a content page called Blue Channel. Every now and then he throws up my thing, so I'm gonna throw up his thing too. So make sure you follow his thing. I'm gonna add my man in the description box below, yeah? Step one, get into the right frame of mind. Now I made a similar video to this in the past, talking about how young people can get on the property ladder. In that video, I was talking about the mindset. That's the most important thing. If you have the wrong mindset, you ain't getting onto no property ladder. You can forget step one or step two. All of this wearing Balmain jeans, Balenciaga trainers, driving a Mercedes when you don't need to, you need to stop that. That mindset, that needs to go. If that's your mindset, I want, I want to wear AP watch or Rolex. So I'm watching videos online. Man are talking about, man are getting legit money. 80 grand coming in, 100 grand coming in. And they're thinking about buying a 35 grand watch. Are you serious? Getting in the right frame of mind means you need to make sacrifice. Give up luxuries. If you want, get on a property ladder, you're going to have to give up luxuries. Yeah, you're going to need to put, okay, I need to buy a property over buying this watch, driving this car, wearing these trainers and that. So the first step is to get in the right frame of mind. If, if your mind is on all that nonsense, all that, you ain't going to buy no property, my brother. I've got a couple of gallows in it, so to my sisters as well. Step two, save up enough money. Let's assume you're in the right frame of mind. It may take you about two or three years to save up a good 25, 30 grand. You don't need to do much research or be a brain surgeon to know, say that 10 grand is not going to be enough to put down a deposit for a property. So you're going to need a good 25, 30 grand. Step three, start researching areas that you want to buy a property in. So I knew right off the bat, Edmonton's too expensive, Luton's too expensive, Milton Keynes is too expensive, Northampton, okay, that's within my budget. Properties around there are around 140, 160 grand for what I want. So that's why I ended up buying a property in Northampton. All right, so boom, to get a rough idea on the value of property that you can afford, think about your yearly salary. That might be £30,000. Multiply that £30,000 by five, that gives you £150,000. That's pretty much what you can afford. Now for me, I was earning £30,000. I multiplied that by five, gave me £150,000. I searched on right move, put in my postcode on my local area, N9, and I started looking for properties. Now I wanted at least a two bed house. I couldn't even get a two bed flat for £150,000, let alone a two bed house. So I had to start looking elsewhere. So I thought, all right, N9 won't give me what I want. Let me try a little bit outside of London. Let me try Luton. I tried Luton. I was not happy with Luton. Okay, let me go a little bit further up north. Let me go Milton Keynes, MK. Not happy with MK. And then I remembered one of my brethren, he owned a property in Northampton. I went up there to do some work. I thought, let me try Northampton. I know it's further out, but I need to get my hands on a property. Let me try Northampton. And then I discovered Northampton properties were within my price range. Step four, find yourself a mortgage lender. Now you can go on the internet and you can go to Barclays, HSBC, Santander, Halifax, all of them. They will all give you a mortgage. The only thing is it's very time consuming. If you approach a mortgage broker, they act like an agent. They go out and find you the best deal. The only thing is, they may charge you a fee. 300, 500, maybe a grand. Certain times, they don't even charge you. Certain times, they charge the actual lender, i.e. the bank, HSBC, Barclays. So, if I was you, to make your life simple, I'll go and find yourself a mortgage broker. So yeah, just go into Google, Type in fee-free mortgage broker. 
and they'll give you a list of different mortgage brokers that do not charge you a fee. More than likely, they actually charge the lender the fee, i.e. the bank, HSBC, Barclays, Santander. Step five, get yourself an AIP, an approval in principle or an agreement in principle. It's the same thing, different name. Your mortgage broker, your mortgage lender is going to ask you a series of questions about yourself, about how much you earn, to basically see if you qualify for a mortgage. The man will run credit checks on you and that. I'm going to run through a quick demonstration using Halifax to show you what I mean. Uh, so this thing's supposed to take about 15 minutes to complete. Uh, that's too long for this video. So I'm just going to run through the first page and then I'm going to skip to the end just so you know what types of questions they ask. So what are you looking to do? Obviously, buy your first home. When are you looking to buy? Well, it should be right away. Who's applying? Just me, I would always advise buying your own property on your own. We're going to run with that example of 150000 in this one, yeah? So how much do you think the property will cost? 150000 How much deposit are you planning to put down? 10% of that is 15000 And then it gives you a breakdown of the property costs. So you will be borrowing a hundred and thirty-five thousand to put down a ten percent deposit. And they ask you about your deposit. Where are you with the deposit? Well, your deposit should be ready. You don't want to be, you know, looking to receive the money from anyone. It should be your own money, and you shouldn't be in a position where you're still saving. You should have the deposit ready. Definitely not. I haven't started saving yet. So at the end of the application, you get to this review page and you can basically go through and check the answers you submitted to the application. Now, the whole point of the agreement in principle is to make sure you're eligible to get a mortgage. Something as silly as not having stay in this country is going to disqualify you. So they ask you a lot of questions, a lot of personal questions and that. And once you get to the end of it, it takes about 10, 15 minutes. Then you can apply to have an AIP. Step six, start looking for properties. I like to use Zoopla for this. So jump onto Zoopla and go to the search bar, type in the area that you want to buy a property in. So in my case, it was Northampton. Now we're gonna be a bit more specific. Instead of setting the max budget to 150, we're gonna set it to 160,000. Property sellers always set their property a little bit higher than they actually wanna sell it for. And the minimum price, we're actually going to set a minimum price this time of 100,000 because if you don't, a lot of properties that you don't want, i.e. caravans and trailer park homes are going to pop up. So we just want to eliminate that. You might have 100 search results when you want to narrow it down to about 50. Property type house, bedrooms, two plus, and then search. We got 32 results. If I didn't set it to 100,000 as a minimum, there would have been about 100 results. So you got a nice little one here. Two bed, 135,000. Two bed, 160,000. Now obviously the seller may be willing to negotiate on that price. Another nice one here, 150,000 free bed. Once you find one that you like, 
select it and just start scrolling through the photos. See if you like the property. Remember, even if you do not like the interior, remember you can always renovate the property. You can always change the kitchen. You can always paint the walls. You can do the electrics. You can change the bathroom. So don't be too focused on the interior. Just be more focused on the room sizes. And if you like the property, book a viewing, call the estate agent. Step seven, make an offer. So once you view the property and you've had a good think about it, if you like the property, make an offer. Always offer lower than the asking price. I.e., if the man there saying, oh, they want to sell the property for a hundred grand or whatever, offer them 95, see what they say. Step eight, get a mortgage offer. So once your offer of 95 has been accepted by the vendor, i.e. the person who's selling the property, contact either your broker or your lender and say, yo, obviously my offer's been accepted, now can I have a mortgage offer? It should look something like this. Step nine. Once you've got your mortgage offer, now it's time to hire a conveyancing solicitor. This is the person who does all the paperwork for you. They do searches in the area and that land registry. They make sure everything goes smoothly. So to find yourself a conveyancer, go to Google and type in conveyancer comparison. And then go to conveyancing index. It will ask you, What's your conveyancing quote for? Select purchase only. Then it will ask you questions about the property, fill out all the information correctly, and then it will give you a quotation. So once it's loaded, it's going to give you a list of prices. Obviously, starting with the cheapest. So the cheapest here is 641, which is really cheap. To be fair, you should be looking to pay around a thousand pounds for conveyancing. That's sort of like the going rate. So 1,140 is average. Valuation time. This is not even a step. This is a part of the process. During the conveyancing, when the solicitor is doing all the paperwork and that, this could take a month and a half, quite a long time. The lender wants to do a valuation on the property. The lender, the bank, i.e. HSBC, Barclays, Santander, they send an agent to do a valuation on that property that you wanna buy. They wanna know, say, that property is worth a hundred grand because it's happened in the past. There's been man out here who They've got a property that's actually worth a hundred grand, but they want to make a, a bit of extra profit on it. So what they do is they list it for 160, tell their brethren to go and buy it. With that extra 60 grand that they get for that property, they break their brethren off 20 grand. Bare people have done it in the past. So obviously now the banks, the lenders, they put a stop to that. Step 10, you've got to transfer over your deposit before you sign the final contract. When I done it the first time, I had to transfer over 13,600 to my conveyancing solicitor. Boy, I was shook, you know. Imagine, imagine having to send over 13,600 to someone that you don't know, someone you never met before, someone who you just speak to them over the phone. My conveyancing solicitor sent me an email saying, yeah, you need to send us over the deposit, 13,600. This is the branch, Barclays in central London. This is the account number. And this is the sort code. Use this reference. You know, I was going to go down to that Barclays branch in central London. You know, I thought, you know what? Before I do that, let me go Edmonton Green. There's a Barclays branch there. I went to Edmonton Green Barclays branch. 
spoke to the clerk inside the bank and explained the situation. I said, listen, I'm buying a property. I don't know the man. I don't really trust us transferring over money like that. I've seen a couple programs or a couple scammers and hackers have hacked into people's accounts and, you know, sent people emails and said, yeah, send us this money for this property and woman can't get back the money or nothing like that after the people have robbed her. Explain the situation. I said, listen, can you verify that my man actually works for this solicitors? I gave them the account number and sort code and we went through the list of names and his name was there. Once I saw that, I was confident to transfer over the money, and I did so. About a week later, I went down to the solicitor and met him for the first time and signed the contract, and that was that. Step 11. Pay any remaining conveyance and solicitor's fees and pay any applicable stamp duty. Alright, so this is what I meant by applicable stamp duty. If you are a first-time buyer, Look in the middle column where it says normal rate. If your property costs 150,000, 300,000, 400,000, you have no stamp duty to pay. There is no stamp duty to pay on properties less than 500,000. But even if you are a first time buyer, look at the normal rate. Look at the middle column. If your property costs more than 500,000, i.e. 550,000, that extra 50,000, you have to pay 5% stamp duty tax on. Step 12, get home insurance, protect your yard. Your yard might burn down in a fire, might get subsidence, a tree root from outside might lift up the floor and that. Get home insurance, mate. you need to protect your investment. To find the best deal on home insurance, type in home insurance comparison on Google. Go to comparethemarket.com. Now they're going to ask you a series of questions. Be truthful. This ain't your car insurance, no, this is your home insurance, this is important. Be truthful. And once you've completed all the questions truthfully, then they'll give you a quotation. And as you can see, you can expect to pay less than £200 per year for your home insurance. It's definitely worth it. Step 13. Go down to the estate agent, collect up the keys to your yard. You're a homeowner now. You own your own house. You own a plot of land. You should be proud of yourself. Not just because you've taken money and gone and bought a property. The mindset, the discipline, the sacrifice it took to say, you know what? Instead of going out there and buying foolishness, I'm going to buy something positive, something long term. It's easy, 20, 30 grand in your account. It's easy. Car, Balenciaga, Balmain, watch. It's easy to go and buy foolishness. Furthermore, furthermore, if you're into that nonsense, Balmain, Gucci and all of this, you ain't even going to have 20, 30 grand in your account. You know why? Because you're going to spend it on foolishness. So, that's an achievement. Because it takes a period of time and sacrifice to accumulate that amount of money and not spend it on foolishness. Way easier to go and say, you know what, let me go and buy all this nonsense car and much more difficult to say, you know what? That's going to wait. I need to buy a house first. I need a roof over me. I need my own property. Don't get it twisted, though. You can have a luxury car and a nice house. You can have both, you know. But only if you buy one of them first. And that's a house. Stay wise.